We suffered heartbreak on the final day of the season, missing out by one goal. Siobhanju, however, got the most goals in the league and the highest average rating with the most man of the matches. And it had nothing to do with exploiting the match engine. I also cheered really loudly when my favourite German team, Frankfurt, beat Dortmund in the DFB Pokal final in the 93rd minute. Oh, and by the way, cheers to the geezer in the comments who told me about that Copper 90 documentary on Union Berlin and their stadium. And I also watched this rivalry video too. Very good. But don't you dare click off and go watch that immediately. Wait till after. But I did appreciate learning about how the fans actually built this stadium. Back to business then, and we've got Terra Moffi and Akgun coming in for free with £10 million in the budget. Liverpool have won the Champions League on penalties against our German champions, Bayern Munich. And looking at our squad, I decided that the left mid spot is what really needs upgrading. And I wasted no time bringing in Aranya from Brazil, who naturally is a left back, but can play left midfield very well. And he has everything that I'm looking for attribute wise in that left midfield spot. I also got offered an interview for the Hoffenheim job, which I declined. They just know I'm the greatest manager of all time, don't they? So we have three good signers coming in in Atkin, who can play both sides, Aranya can play both positions on the left, and Terra Moffi starts as our advance forward, but can be the target man if needed. I've just had an interesting offer for Llewellyn. It's not as much as his value, but I would be open to selling him. His attributes aren't really that great, but statistically, he did score 19 goals last season. It just seemed to be a lot of multiples in different games. I negotiated to what I felt like would be an acceptable offer, and they matched it. And a bid for Geraldo Becker, however, I don't really know. There's something about him that makes me want to keep him, despite him not performing as well as Llewellyn. I really am the worst manager ever, aren't I? Unfortunately for us, Becker really wanted to go and has declared that he is going to leave next year on a free. Not in my book, son. I'm going to take this £10 million bid from Gladbach and I'll just buy a replacement with the funds. Thankfully, though, I think you'll like my record transfer replacement in Cancellieri from Lazio, a young winger with bags of potential and instantly improves the quality of our squad. And we lock Siabachu down for a longer contract, so it's a very good day for Union Berlin. Our pre-season friendlies went well, we even beat Man United. Scouts are forcing Diamonde down my throat, and I've resisted the signing so much up until now because I've signed him so many times in the past. But he is literally going for peanuts, and I don't know how much longer I can turn that down. DFB Bacal first round against Ingolstadt. Come to me, sexy, this is gonna be our year. Let's see what this team can do then. Horrendous kick clash, by the way, but anyway, Great start when Cancellieri assisted Terra Moffi within 15 minutes. And our wing play worked again not long later when overlapping fullback Uvijan crossed in for Jordan to also head one in. Good stuff. I realised we had no backup right back and Man City don't want anything for Rico Lewis. So that's an absolute steal on loan. Yet again, we get a Bundesliga team in the second round of the DFB Pokal. Our first game of the season and we faced Mines and the nutmeg master Llewellyn. And of course, Llewellyn was the man who scored for Mines. However, before he did that, we scored already through Terra Moffi. And again, before Llewellyn had scored for Mines, Jordan Siabachu had scored a second as well, meaning his goal was to get them back into the game, but Jordan scored a penalty in the second half and we won 3-1. FC Cologne came next before we host Dortmund. And once again, we are cooking on gas early as the boys play to Siabachu who finds Terra Moffi, and we are 1-0 up inside two minutes. But from kickoff, Cologne won a corner and the ball fell to Brithorp who shot got deflected in our net, 1-1. But we were unfazed, and this time Thorsby found Moffy to put us back into the lead. And in the 83rd minute, Terra Moffy turned provider when he cut it across for Jordan to tap in the win. Unfortunately, as the game closed out, the ball was played over the top, and Killian brought down a player, and of course, he was the last man, and the referee gave him a straight red card, so he now misses the Dortmund game. I thought this was quite interesting that Union Berlin had the second lowest commercial income in the league, only ahead of Dusseldorf, who apparently bring in absolutely nothing. Looking at this Dortmund squad then, they've actually made some really good improvements, bringing in Diego Delo at right back, Pulisic on the wing and Patrick Schick up front. And yet, with all that attacking firepower on both sides, the game ended 0-0. I bet I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm stunned. On deadline day, I made another incredible low move for Thiago Tomas of Sporting as our backup striker with an optional future fee of just seven million. 
He's still only 22 and he has some fantastic attributes and some very good physicals. Transfer window now closed and that might be one of my best windows I've ever had on FM23. Back to the games and Aranya plays in Jordan to score another early goal. Unfortunately, there's not much we could do about Hoffenheim's equaliser. It was simply just a cracking strike. Thankfully, we tried to exploit some game mechanics, but Jordan's header hit the post, but it's played back across and Terra Moffi sweeps up. Don't panic, Jordan, my American friend. Uverjam will find you at the near post to tap in your second. We then ripped Hoffenheim open next with Aranya pass to Jordan, who played Moffi through, and it's 4-1, and that's the final score. We beat Hamburg in the league 1-0 through a corner, and it's actually funny how many goals we continue to score from these. There's one more, and the second against Dusseldorf too. The third Though, that came from Route 1 football as Jordan heads on for Moffy to take it around the goalkeeper. Somehow we are unbeaten and top of the league. The nine men of Augsburg only held us to a 1-0 win from the spots. Jordan Siabachu put us ahead against Eintracht Frankfurt, but Sander Berge hit a rocket and we drew the game 1-1. I am telling you, wing play is incredible this year. What a cross and header by Jordan. But near post corner still exists to be fair, but I do love the fact that Route 1 football works too. Jordan gets a hat-trick in this 4-2 win against Werder Bremen. We are still top of the league, unbeaten, and Jordan Siabachu is smashing in the goals with 12 in 9, and Uwe Jan has 8 assists. It's an incredible start to the season. The only worrying thing is we only have three goal scorers in 11 games so far. DFB Pakal next. And surely, with the form that we're on right now, we are not going to lose this match. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! Well, let's hope that doesn't affect our league form. <sighs> yep, that affected our league form, all right. We've now dropped off top place and faced Leipzig next. And we scored an own goal. And then we conceded another and lost 2-0. The board then gave us more funds. They gave me £2 million. Oh, let's go! That's class! The final games in 2024 weren't that great considering our start to the season either, winning two games, drawing one and losing two to Gladbach and Bayern Munich. Back to the football after the winter break and Mainz take the lead in the first minute of the match. Brilliant. Thiago Tomas then somehow didn't score, but luckily the board dropped to Siabachu, who did score. Some new names on the score sheet as Rani Kadira puts us ahead. And finally, Uwe Jan scores a great free kick to secure the points. After conceding two first half goals, we needed a fight back. With Terra Moffi at the AFCON, it was Thiago Tomas who pulled the one goal back. No comment about the second goal, wink wink. But being a Union Berlin fan isn't always great. Back to back defeats to Dortmund and Hoffenheim. Once again, Again, we win 1-0 though through exploiting the mechanics of the match engine against Hamburg. And then we lost to Dusseldorf. Another 1-0 win when Uwe Jan's perfectly weighted pass found Thiago Tomas against Augsburg. And another 1-0 win when Schaefer smashed a volley when the ball came down from the heavens. What a goal that is. When Werder Bremen came to Berlin next, they were greeted with a Jordan Siabachu hat-trick. Uwe Jan even assisted the first two goals as well. And finally, Cancellieri, from which he switched wings during the end of the first half. The game finished 3-2. We ended March with four wins from four when Jordan got back-to-back -back hat tricks. And then this put Jordan top of the goal scoring charts, one above Patrick Schick, but even after four wins in a row, we still only sit in sixth place. Make that five wins in a row. Our winning streak finally ended when we faced RB Leipzig and they took the lead from a scramble in our six yard box. Thankfully though, Thorsby popped up with a header and the game finished 1-1. And you'd think we'd just slip straight back into our winning streak, right? Wrong! We got battered 4-0 at home. But I bet that that made the players come out of the dressing room in the next match firing on all cylinders, right? Wrong again! We got destroyed by Bayern Munich. What made it worse was Bayern Munich actually won the league thanks to that win. Piss off! Everything's going wrong! Everything's going wrong! That, however, was enough to kick us back into gear and Thorsby received the ball, cut in on his right foot and smashed in the only goal of the match against Stuttgart. Disgustingly, Freiburg used broken game mechanics to score against us. How dare you? We were just really lucky that when we worked out from a corner, it fell to Schaefer, whose finish was wonderful and we will take the 1-1 draw. And that does guarantee us European football next season. And we go into the final day, needing just a point to make sure it's Europa League 
and not the Conference League. So what side of UEFA will we fall on? Well, once again, prepare yourself for the most epic final days of the season you're ever gonna see. I'm just kidding, the game finished nil-nil. There were 29 shocks and neither team could score. Hold on just a second though. Freiburg are in the cup final and if they win, they get our Europa League spot instead of us. And it went to damn extra time as well. We need Leipzig to lift the trophy and Amin Gori finally broke the deadlock after 99 minutes. And when Freiburg pushed for an equaliser, it was Christopher and Cuckoo who punished them, making it two. And just for good measure, Benjamin Sesko popped up and made the scoreline 3-0. And we can sit happily in sixth knowing that we are returning to the Europa League next season. But with how much of a budget will we have to increase our quality in this team for Europe? Well, make sure you are subscribed and you turn that notification bell on because next week the next episode will drop if it is already out i'll pop it up on screen right now because we have 20 million pounds to play around with